behind these walls, inside his hospital room, the young Boston bombing suspect, Johar Sarnayev, is reportedly painting an elaborate and chilling portrait for investigators in this case. It is not easy for this young man to communicate. He's got a gunshot wound to his neck. But what he is saying, you will want to hear. ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, has this Nightline exclusive. In the hours before Jahar Zarnayev was charged with the crime that could lead to the death penalty, authorities tell ABC News the 19-year-old accused terrorist revealed the why and the how of the deadly bomb attacks. And for all the power of the two explosions, for all the dramatic gunfights, and for all the indications of well-trained terrorist techniques, the younger brother reportedly told agents, according to the authorities, it was almost entirely done from the Internet, homegrown, with no direction from overseas. They used an Al-Qaeda Internet description of how to make a pressure cooker bomb. Seth Jones, a counter-terror expert at the RAND Corporation, has analyzed the marathon attack and how it was pulled off. They ad-libbed part of it and made some decisions on a uh, few elements of the bomb making. But what's different about this is they took a very simple recipe and, um, and then targeted a, uh, a, a, the, the Boston Marathon. And why the marathon? Because officials say it was there, essentially, and easy. Not long in the planning, either. It does appear, though, that the younger brother um, had not become involved until later in the process, perhaps a week or so before the actual attack. Jones says the brothers seem to have been inspired by the internet preachings of Anwar al-Awlaki, the charismatic American-born al-Qaeda jihadist, who has been dead now for more than a year and a half. The older brother appeared to be the more radicalized of the two and was the one that drove both the need to conduct the attack as well as the preparation for the attack themselves, that is building the bombs. And as to what drove 26-year-old Tamerlan, officials say his younger brother claims it was hatred of America. He may have been angry at other things about the status of his life, but he increasingly turned to Salafi jihadism, was radicalized because, among other things, of uh, U.S. foreign policy decisions overseas, and that um, especially Afghanistan and Iraq. What the younger brother is reported to be saying is consistent with what we heard in their neighborhood about the older brother Tamerlan and his disgust with things American and Christian. He said that the Bible is a cheap copy of the Quran. He said that the most American wars are excused with the Bible. It also emerged today that there might be a possible link to an unsolved murder two years ago. Local prosecutors said Monday, given Tamerlan's violent nature, they are now investigating whether Tamerlan was involved in the brutal murder of three young men, one of whom was his roommate. The three were found with their throats slashed, covered in marijuana and cash. Federal agents have also been looking closely at the six-month trip Tamerlan took last year to Russia, at a time that rebel groups there carried out a number of violent attacks as ABC's Kirat Radia discovered in the Dagestan region. Just last year alone, Dagestan lost 115 police officers in nearly 300 terror attacks. Just two years ago, this street was obliterated by a car bomb. But according to officials, Chechnya had nothing to do with the marathon attack, in the view of the younger brother. It doesn't at this point appear to be a Chechnya thing. Neighbors in Cambridge say Tamerlan was a changed man when he returned to the U.S. from Russia swearing off tobacco and alcohol, linking to extremist jihadist videos, and saying, I don't have any American friends. I don't understand them. I would characterize it as, uh, as really self-radicalization. I mean, these are individuals who may have some connections overseas, but the primary uh, radicalization is in places like the United States. The FBI may get additional answers from Tamerlan's wife, seen over the weekend leaving the family apartment. A Rhode Island native, she converted to Islam and changed her name from Catherine to Karima. Because she lived in the same Cambridge apartment, where authorities believe the two brothers hatched their plot, she could provide clues about whether others were involved. Her family lawyer said today she was shocked to learn of her husband's role and had no idea until the FBI first released those surveillance pictures of her husband and named him a suspect. In the gunfight with police on Thursday night that killed Tamerlan, 
He and his brother were well armed with at least five other explosive devices, some of which they threw at the police in pursuit. It does appear that they were um, potentially interested in conducting follow-on attacks. That may have been why they didn't try to flee as, uh, as fast as they did. Today, federal agents were looking for more bombs or a possible bomb factory. Hours after the younger brother talked to federal agents, authorities swarmed an area behind a Cambridge rug store where the brother's father used to repair cars. With no known link so far to Al-Qaeda or Chechnyan rebels, officials believe they are dealing with a new, equally dangerous trend, the Internet-trained terrorist. And this is now kind of the Al-Qaeda modus operandi now, not, not relying only on operatives but trying to get people to do it, to self-radicalize and to build their own bombs without having to come to a training camp in Pakistan or Yemen or other locations. Monday, the mother of the two brothers told ABC News from Russia that Tamerlan was always the son to call the shots. He was the leader. And that after the bombing, he called her in Russia to say, everything is okay, thanks to Allah. And Brian Ross joins me now. Based on what they're hearing from this young man, is it safe to say there was no foreign plot here? As best they can tell in the initial assessment, that really is more the twisted thinking of a self-radicalized young man whose only real help, uh, Dan, was his younger brother, as far as they can tell. But speaking of the younger brother who's talking inside the walls of this hospital behind us, can they take what he says at face value? Not at all. It's in his interest to minimize his own role. They continue to look for any possible overseas connections or a wider cell, but so far, no indication of that. Are they finding any hints of imminent threats out there? No current threat is how they feel about it now. That's good to hear. Brian Ross, yeah. thanks for your reporting. Excellent work tonight.